Hey everyone, it's your boy Jojo Rabbit. We're about to go into the war and kill some people. You wanna come along with me? Let's go! Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd. I'm your host, Zack Snyder. If you're new around here on Yen, we pull from every corner of nerd culture to talk about anything and everything that piques my interest. The Oscar Best Picture Marathon continues as we make our way through these nominations. We've covered three so far with six more in left. And today we'll be covering the one that has such a dark topic, but yet with a comedic angle. It does so with such grace and poise that it's really quite remarkable. No, we're not talking about the Joker. I already talked about that one. Let's go take a look at Jojo Rabbit. Today you boys will be involved in such activities as war games, <laughs> ambush techniques, and blowing stuff up. I don't think I can do this. Ross? Of course you can. If you don't know anything about it, 2019's Jojo Rabbit is a dark comedy drama directed by Taika Waititi and starring Roman Griffin Davis, a young boy named Jojo who is a massive fanboy. Except unlike being ridiculously into Star Wars or comic books, Jojo is insanely into, well, the, the one and only Mr. Adolf Hitler. The story focuses primarily on Jojo's adoration of Nazis, along with his interaction with a teenage girl who just so happens to be Jewish. Jojo Rabbit also got nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Costume Design, Best Production Design, Best Film Editing, and Best Supporting Actress for Scarlett Johansson. In many ways, this is a coming of age story. Jojo learns about life and war and love, while also having to deal with his father being away at the war, his sister who had recently just died from the influenza, and his mother who, spoilers by the way, we'll be talking about minor spoilers, doesn't like Nazis at all, despite being German, she actually goes around helping Jewish people, including the Jewish girl that Jojo finds in the attic. On the other end of the spectrum, Jojo Rabbit is a really funny comedy that includes Taika Waititi running around as Hitler, Nazis screaming Heil every two minutes, and children running around in a war scene in cardboard clothes. In a time where comedy is often being policed by one group of people and abused by another group of people, it's very refreshing to see someone like Taika take up the helm of a Sardis parody and really just make it work. This could have gone really bad in the wrong hands, but you know what they say in the comic world, any topic can be made funny as long as the right person is telling the joke. And it's this perfect balance between the comedy and the heartfelt coming of age aspects that really make Jojo Rabbit work for me. I don't think it would have been as good without one or the other. Great writing aside, there's also some really great acting performances here. I'm especially impressed with child actor Roman Griffin Davis. He plays such a huge role in this film and does such a great job in it. Not many child actors are good, let alone great so I hope he keeps up the work in future films. I also really like Scarlett Johansson in it. I've been talking a lot about how much I like her acting recently. She plays Jojo's mother and there's a lot of cute scenes between those two. She also plays a motherly figure to Elsa, the Jewish girl, and again, great stuff here as well. There's also an entire scene where she kind of plays two parts and it's funny, but it's also emotional. Oh, and towards the end of the film, uh, we'll say the end of her character arc, on my rewatch of this movie, I actually started to tear up. It, it genuinely impacted me emotionally, and I think it was set up really, really well. Taika, obviously as Hitler, <laughs> the wild and man that he is, it's not only funny, but as the film continues, and as Jojo grows up to be a person, and realizing that, hey, Jewish people are people too, and maybe I shouldn't hate them, Hitler starts to be less of a comedic character, and more of a, yeah, by the way, this is actually Adolf Hitler. He was a bad man. He did a lot of bad stuff and he starts yelling at this kid and Taika plays and writes this shift in character extremely well. I have to talk about the editing though because with it being such a wacky film there's just room for the editor to really just have fun with the cuts and it works so well with this. I've been getting a lot more into editing a lot lately mainly because it's how I pay my bills and I want to get better at it but I've been like looking into film editing and TV editing and I've been paying more attention to the editing and the media that I watch and I've talked about it on a few episodes of Yen recently where I'm like editing should be subtle unless it's part of a specific style. And in Jojo Rabbit, it is definitely contributing to a style here. The editing works so well in enhancing the overall style that Taika Waititi is going for, and there's no wonder that this film got nominated for Best Editing. At the end of the day, this film takes such a wild concept and excels in its execution. 
it manages to tell a heartwarming story that makes you laugh all while championing a message of anti-hate. I'm not gonna waste any more of your time here. There's not really much else I can say about it. It's a good movie. I recommend checking it out, but we're here because it got nominated for best picture and we gotta ask, did it deserve its nominations? Well, it won best adapted screenplay and obviously I'm all in for that win. I like the comedy and the drama and how it works together. Production design is also pretty solid. Not my favorite of the year, but I understand why it was nominated for that. Best supporting actress for Scarlett Johansson. I already said how much I liked her. I can definitely stand behind that. I already talked about how much I love the editing. So best film editing makes sense for me as well. Best costume design is a category that I really don't pay much attention to, but like there was a lot of attention to detail and costumes in this movie and I'm kind of surprised it didn't win that award. And as far as best picture goes, there's definitely a few films from 2019 that I personally enjoyed more than Jojo Rabbit. So I was kind of surprised to see this get the nomination over them. However, unlike a couple of other films this year, I still really liked it and I'm not at all upset about this nomination. Will it be in the lower tier of these pictures? Maybe. You'll have to find out after I talk about the other five nominees and then we do our ranking of all nine of them. But that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead that like button. If for reason you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. Let me know in the comments. What did you think about Jojo Rabbit? Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Do you think it deserves to be best picture material? If so, I want to hear all about your thoughts. In the meantime, we're going to be continuing on this train of best picture nominees. And I'll be back tomorrow to talk about another one. Until then, I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.